Hey everyone, my name is Deepak and Microsoft Ignite Conference just concluded with tons of new features announcements across Microsoft 365. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on my favorite Microsoft Teams and some of the top features that I'm really looking forward to having in Microsoft Teams. So hang tight, there's a great lineup coming up for Microsoft Teams features. Please make sure to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below if you want to watch more of how to tips and tricks video on collaboration apps. Let's jump right in. So the biggest feature announced in this year's Ignite for Microsoft Teams was new immersive meetings with Mesh inside Microsoft Teams. This brings in the virtual reality inside Microsoft Teams and with personalized avatars, you can now feel presence in meetings without turning on cameras. Users can make conversations interactive and express themselves using live reactions through avatars. Organizations now can use immersive spaces that resemble physical spaces such as conference rooms, design centers, networking lounges to enhance and speak creativity and also foster water cooler connections. Users can seamlessly leverage their existing documents, presentations, and whiteboarding content from Microsoft 365 and share and collaborate using this spatially. These experiences will be available in preview as part of Teams on PC, mobile, and through mixed reality headsets in the first half of 2021. Number two, which is one of my favorite features as well, is Teams Connect will be in public preview in first quarter of 2021, 2022, which allows you to share channels with the external partners. So no need to create guest accounts anymore or log into a separate tenant. With the new enhancement coming to private preview, you'll be able to schedule a meeting, collaborate in real time on apps, and share channels up to 50 teams and as many organizations as you need. Number three in my list is one of the features that I already love in Slack and now it's coming to team where you can chat with self, giving you ability to uh, send messages to your own ID, kind of a safe place for writing drafts such as quick ideas, reminders on your mobile, and helping you stay organized and avoid sending incomplete messages accidentally. So the number four in my list is the new compact mode features, which allows you to display more message in the Teams windows. In my view, a new space has been one of the biggest problem in Microsoft Teams, but this compact setting lets you minimize the need to scroll up and down by fitting 50% more messages on the same screen. Number five, which is one of my favorites as well, is schedule a message. Delayed delivery of message enables you to select a specific time to send a message. Like delayed delivery in Outlook, you will be able to send out chat message in a time that is convenient to you and the message will be arrived at, to its destination at the time you scheduled. We often work in distributed teams and in different time zones, so this feature really comes in handy there. Now moving on to meetings, there were some of the big announcements in inside meetings as well. One of them being that you can now assign roles before even joining the meeting using scheduling tab. For example, you can assign co-host, presenter, and attendee roles before joining the meeting. Uh, second one being you can ensure that all voices are heard by seeing the order of the hands raised inside a meeting. Again, comes in very handy when you want to make your meetings more equal and diversified. The third big feature for meetings is that you can now mute notifications and pin or hide your own video features. This helps you focus more on the content rather than focusing on your video like I do many times. So moving on to calling piece, Finally, some good news for interop interoperability fans. Also, some of you who are still running old phones on-premises, 
SIP gateway will generally become available this one, which makes SIP, all SIP phone models compatible with Teams core calling functionality. And the list of compatible devices I'll put down in the description section. The other major updates in Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer service, which is an all-in-one digital contact center that leverages Microsoft Teams. This brings in traditional contact center, unified communication, and customer service capabilities together in an integrated SaaS solution. Soon agents and subject matter experts will be able to connect with chat, voice, and video for a truly multi-model experience. This would give more power to Dynamics 365 platform. Number 11, soon the admins will be able to set a bandwidth control policy to disable video calls when users are working in bandwidth constrained areas. This protects the reliability of connection automatically on where users are located. Once users return to a location with better bandwidth, the video calling is restored. I think this can be very, very handy if you're working in low bandwidth areas. So moving on to webinars, a new virtual green room is coming into webinars, which will enable organizers and presenters to socialize, monitor chat, Q&A, manage attendee settings, and share content before the event starts. This provides a private space, separate from attendees, to talk live and prep in the pre-live phase. While attendees wait, they are greeted with a welcome screen and they can use chat to engage or pose questions with the Q&A experience. This feature will be available in preview in early 2022. The next feature, which is also one of my favorites, is the ability to assign co -organization, the co-organizer feature. And it will let you assign up to 10 co-organizers for webinars and also for meetings. The co-organizer will have the same capabilities and permissions as the organizer, enabling them to do multiple tasks such as manage meeting options, create polls, and control audio settings. The next one in the list is the new Q&A experience, which enables more structure for both open and moderated meetings and webinars. Organizers and presenters can mark best answers filter responses, moderate and dismiss questions, and pin posts such as welcome message. So moving on to room devices, there is a new check-in feature that is coming on room panels. To help you ensure your meeting spaces are getting maximum use, Microsoft is enabling a way to check into a room from a Teams panel. Users can check into the room by tapping the button on the panel or leave it to room occupancy sensors that will soon be able to integrate with Teams panels. If no one checks in to the room, it will be released back to the room inventory for others to reserve and use. The check-in button can also be used to send a notification to the front of room display. In the coming months, this feature will be available on Teams panels from Crestron, Yealink, and the Logitech tab scheduler pending certification. Moving on, early next year, native Bluetooth capability will enter preview mode, allowing you to easily answer calls from your headset and use the Teams button for quick actions like joining a meeting, even, if with, even without your USB dongle is nowhere to be found. So how handy is that? You don't need a dongle for your headset anymore. You can just answer the call natively from your Bluetooth device. I hope you found it useful. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button below to watch more videos on collaboration tools, collaboration apps. See you in the next video. Ciao.